Hello everyone, I hope that you're all doing well during the outbreak and staying safe. In today's video, I wanna share with you a list of things that I think are important to be mindful of when you're first starting out editing photos and that I wish I knew when I was first starting out. Number one, clipping. So what is clipping? So clipping is when in a photo you basically lose details due to the highlights becoming completely white or the shadows becoming completely black. So you can see this very easily on a histogram. Anything that is touching that left side is going to be completely black and anything that is touching the right side is completely white. This basically results in a loss of detail in that area and you obviously want to avoid that. So if you're using either Lightroom or the camera raw section of Photoshop, you can actually turn on these little warnings that will tell you about whether something is clipping. It will highlight the blacks and blues and the whites and red and this basically tells you which sections of the image are completely white or black so it's just super useful to have these warnings on when you're adjusting the exposure and playing with the highlights and the shadows just to make sure that you don't lose any detail that is important in your image obviously sometimes clipping is unavoidable for example if you have the sun in your image it would be unnatural to have it any other way than like pure white as this is how we see it in real life number two is too much saturation so this can be particularly tempting when you're first starting out and I know I was guilty of this all of my early photos are super saturated it's very tempting to go for these loud eye-catching colors if you look at these two photos which one catches your attention more so aside from the obvious fact that having these saturated colors is very unnatural there's also such thing as color clipping so this is a similar concept as the one in the highlights and the shadows where when you saturate colors they eventually reach the limit of saturation and start becoming like a uniform block and you start losing details and gradients between shades so let's look at this photo of a sheep as an example. Notice how in the raw image the sky has a gradient. There are some muted blues at the bottom of the sky and some more saturated ones towards the top. But as I turn the saturation up, the gradient disappears slowly and the sky becomes a more uniform block of color. However, you can actually use this as a stylistic choice, but make sure that you do it on purpose and use it to your advantage instead of just doing it by a mistake. I've seen some really cool photos where they use this saturation slider to make something look very uniform. And in my opinion, it gives the photo a more minimalistic feeling and it just makes your subject stand out more, especially if you're shooting with the sky as a background. Number three, too much sharpening. So again, this was something that I was guilty of when I was first starting out. I used to bump up the sharpness quite a lot on my images and looking back on it, they look a little bit strange. Sharpening adds contrast to the light and dark edges within the photo, which can be used to accentuate texture, but too much sharpening can lead to halos being created around those edges, making the sharpening look a little bit more obvious and can also introduce a lot of unwanted noise and texture into the areas of the image that are supposed to be smooth like the sky for example so it's important to know what over sharpening looks like so that you basically won't ruin your photo and you won't look back on them thinking about what you would have changed number four is destructive editing so all editing that you do to your photo and exporting it is destructive in some way to the quality of that photo particularly when you're done editing your raw files and then you export them as JPEG. This basically means that all that data that was stored in the raw file is being compressed into a smaller file size by getting rid of some of that information. That's why it's so important to have a backup of the original files and not save over them so that in case you make a mistake, you can always come back to it. I used to save over original files because I thought that I was going to delete them anyway. And so once I actually saved over the original raw files with these tiny little JPEGs because I didn't check the export settings. Luckily, they were not like super important photos, but I was still pretty upset with myself that after all my hours of editing, all I had was these tiny little JPEGs. Another thing that I did at the beginning and a lot of people that I've spoken to that are interested in photography also did was re-edit files and basically keep saving them over the original. So I would start out with a raw file then save over that with a JPEG then go back to that JPEG, fix something then save over that JPEG and it was basically like a never-ending cycle of just saving over the file and what this basically does and I didn't realize every time you save over that JPEG it's being compressed even more so in the end you do end up with this file that is a lot worse quality than if you just kept the original raw file and every time you went to re-edit something you just re-edited that original raw file and then exported a new one this is something that's very important to be mindful of because a lot of people don't realize how this 
destructive the saving over cycle can be. Here's an example of some images that have been exported multiple times as JPEGs and how the quality has changed. So it's very important that you have your raw editor file saved as a PSD or a TIFF with the, all the layers. And every time you want to fix something, you go back to that file instead of saving over your exported JPEGs. And the last one is for getting to straighten images. This is something that I see so often when I'm browsing Facebook or Instagram, where someone has this really nice photo that they clearly put effort into taking, but it is just slightly crooked and you can see that the horizon is not straight. So when I look at my early photos, I also notice the same problem. This is such a simple action that you can do in a few seconds and it makes a huge difference to your image. I even do this with all my portraits because I feel like it makes a huge difference. Here's like a side by side comparison so you can see it. Unless you're going for that Dutch angle look, I would just get into a habit of straightening every single photo you take. Anyway guys, I hope that you found this video useful and that it will save you from some of the mistakes that I did when I was starting out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll answer them. Also, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook to see more of our work and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye!